Hi everyone, it's Don from Don's Family Vacations and a few months ago I released a video called 25 Things to Do for a First Time Cruiser. It turned out to be one of my most popular videos and everyone seems to like it so I thought I'd do a little twist on that and this time I'm going to do 25 tips for things not to do on a cruise. Some of these can ruin your vacation and some of these can actually get you kicked off the cruise. So 25 things coming up after this. Number one, don't smoke unless you're in a designated smoking zone. If you're caught smoking on your balcony or up on deck that's not a designated spot, you can actually get kicked off at the next port for doing it. And the reason for this is, people don't tend to realize, but say you're on your balcony and the wind is going and you flick your cigarette into the ocean, well, chances are it's not going in the ocean, it's going into a cabin down the way or down on deck someplace. And trust me, you don't want to be 10 miles out at sea and have a fire break out on a cruise ship because there's nowhere else to go but into the ocean. So, number one tip, you can actually ruin your vacation, get you kicked off, don't smoke on your balconies, take the time to go to the designated smoking zones. Number two is, I know a lot of people love this and I love shore excursions, I love learning new things, learning new cultures, experiencing the vibe of the cities and stuff like that. But when you're on a cruise and you're trying to relax a little bit, don't overdo the shore excursions. Don't book a shore excursion every single time you're in every single port, especially on a, like a longer cruise. It's like 14 days. Give yourself some time to just enjoy the place you're at by yourself. Walk along the streets. Don't be part of that regimented tour that you have to be on and off the ship at certain times and following people and crowds and they're fun but they can be taxing after a while and sometimes you'll get back from them and you'll just by feel exhausted and you'll curl up in bed and the next thing you know it's 11 o'clock at night and your entire night's gone, you've missed dinner, you've missed the shows, you've missed the comedy shows. So yeah, just take it easy, do the shore excursions you most want to do, don't think you have to do every single one that's available. This one can get you kicked off the ship as well. Don't yell at the staff on a cruise ship. Whether it's somebody serving at the buffet, uh, your a room attendant, or uh, some performer on the deck. You can voice your displeasure, that's not a problem. If you're upset about something, feel free to mention it. You don't have to be angry about it, you don't have to yell about it. And whatever you do, don't ever threaten somebody when you're getting in an argument. Because some, don't forget, if you go into customer services, that's 90% of what these people deal with is people complaining about something. So, you know, if you're s sitting there all day and your job is to listen to people complain about your services and your products and getting angry at you, sometimes they'll get a little angry back. They don't mean to. It's not part of their job. It's just natural human reaction, right? If somebody's always complaining to you, eventually you're just going to snap and say, shut up, it's just a little thing. We'll replace the towel for you, sir, or something like that. Uh, something like we all read that story, I don't know if you did or not, but of a man at Disney World who got the wrong luggage in his room, held the people's luggage captive because his Hello Kitty toothbrush had gotten damaged in his <laughs> luggage when it got delivered to him and he was demanding free rooms and new toothbrushes for the entire family and free park tickets and holding these people's luggage and then he's surprised when he gets arrested. <laughs> so yeah, just remember you're on vacation, don't let the little things bug you and be polite to the staff and whatever you do, just don't yell at them. You can talk to them firmly. But don't ever yell at somebody on a cruise ship because that can get you off that ship faster than smoking does. Number four, buffets are free, food is free, everything's available, I can eat as much as I want. Yeah, well, don't. Nothing ruins the cruise more than stuffing yourself every chance you get and feeling full all day, all the time. 
you don't want to go swimming, you don't want to go flow riding, you don't want to go on excursions, you just feel bloated and you feel good. And I know the feeling because my very first cruise and I saw all this food and I oh yeah, pour it in. And the next two days I spent in my room not feeling very well. So just remember, it's there. You can go back. It's not going anywhere. The buffet is going to be there 24 hours. So if you're hungry, eat, but don't overeat. Make sure you're just being comfortable. Because did you know the first time cruiser, the average weight gain for a seven day cruise is 10 pounds? 10 pounds. How many of us struggle every day to lose 10 pounds as best we can? So remember that little tip. You don't want to gain 10 pounds on your cruise. A couple pounds is fine, but you also don't want to feel bloated all the time. So yeah, don't, don't overeat. Number five, just like don't overeat, don't over drink. Again, being drunk on a cruise ship and getting rowdy on a cruise ship can get you kicked off, can get you put in their little jail that yes, cruise ships have little jail areas that they can put you. And worst of all, you wake up the next day completely hung over. What do you feel like doing? Yeah, just staying in my bed. And don't forget, you're on the open ocean. So if you're drunk with a hangover in the open ocean, what are you going to get next? You're going to get seasick. So yeah, don't over drink. Don't think because you bought a drink package, I have to have 15 drinks to make up for my money that I spent on the drink package. Just enjoy yourself, have some wine, have a cup of beer by the pool and relax, but just don't overindulge because not only will people around you be annoyed, the cruise ships themselves can get annoyed. Number six, slather on that sunscreen. I don't care how ridiculous you look, if it's white or anything like that, and it's always on like the people on the nose you see in the old 70s movies, whenever they go to the beach, they have the white nose thing on there. But slather it on because even if you're in a warm area, say you're coming from Florida, you're used to the hot weather, Believe it or not, just going into the Barbados and Jamaica, the sun is different it, and you're, don't, you're on the open ocean. So anyone who sunbathes by in, the, in their pool knows that the water reflects the sun and you tend to get more burned when you're on a pool lounge than you are on the sun deck beside the pool. Same effect on the ocean, on the cruise ship. Sunburns can really be painful if you don't slather on that sunscreen and don't cheap out on it. Get the good stuff, get the heavy, uh, you know, at least 25, 26, and make sure that you're protected so the sun should enjoy your vacation with the sun instead of ruining your vacation with the sun. Number seven, a lot of cruise ships right now are offering teeth whitening at very cheap prices while you're on a cruise ship. Yeah, that's great. Except these aren't your little crest white strips that you just put on for an hour and then take them off and everything's fine. This is an actual compound they put in your mouth and they make your mouth very sensitive and very sore sometimes. And if your mouth is sore, every time you bite into something, every time you drink something, it's going to hurt. And it can do that for like two days after the treatment. So be careful of this. If you're going to get teeth whitening, maybe think about the embarkation day uh, when you're leaving the ship. And uh, yeah, because a sore mouth with all that free food around and you pay for the drink packages and you can't drink or eat. Yeah, that's going to suck. Don't be a stickler or a regimentalist. And what I mean by that is one of those people who have to write down the time and this is what we're doing and this is where we're going and this is what we're going to enjoy and it's going to do, going to do it for 37 minutes and then we're running over here. We're going to see this show for eight minutes. Learn to roll with the punches, especially on cruises because cruises change more than any other vacation you can think of because sometimes the water gets a little rough and you can't use the boats to get to shore. So they're just going to skip the port and they're going to go to the next port and they're going to spend another sea day. And if you're one of those people that get really annoyed, oh my God, I'm not going to Nassau today. What am I going to do? Well, you're still on a cruise ship. There's lots to do on the ship. It's beautiful. Enjoy the ship. Learn to roll with those punches because things are going to change on cruises quite often and you're going to have to live with it. And if you can't, then maybe cruising isn't quite for you. So if you're one of those people who can easily say, you know what, I'm just on vacation, whatever. You're going to so much more enjoy a vacation than somebody who needs to time everything out to the second. 
Number nine, a lot of people think when you make your dining plans, that's it, I'm stuck. I have to eat at eight o'clock now every day and blah, blah. No, no, you chose your dining plan, but you know what? Go talk to the people when you're going into the, the uh, food service attendant at the beginning of the door when you walk in, get services and just say, hey, you know what? I'd like to change my time to six o'clock and I'd like to change my seat from there to there. And quite often I never actually had an issue. Uh, I probably changed things like that six or seven times and they've done it every single time. If it's impossible for really book crews and you know, no, but don't be afraid to ask. Don't think that it's a stick rule and you have to stick with it. Go ahead and ask nine times at least out of 10, they'll accommodate you to get you what you want on that dining for your seating and your guests. Number 10, this one can be expensive. If you're traveling outside of your normal country, you're uh, in an Alaska cruise, you're on a Canadian cruise, you're heading over to Europe, don't leave your phone on roam. Whatever you do. A lot of people for some reason think, oh, well, I'm going from Seattle to Alaska. Alaska is United States, Seattle's United States. So there's no roaming charges, I'll be fine. And then you pass through the Canadian side to get to Alaska. And by the time you get back, you got a $400 roaming charge on your phone. So be very careful. Make sure you're, you know, to be safe, make sure it's on Wi-Fi and just put your on airplane mode. And that way you're not going to get no surprise bill at the end of a cruise. I know one gentleman who went on a world cruise, forgot to do this, and he had an $18,000 phone bill. Obviously, he contacted the phones and they were understanding, but he still ended up paying around $1,000. But can you imagine you come back from your world cruise and you have an $18,000 phone bill? Yeah, swipe, airplane mode, solved. Number 11, don't just choose the cheapest cabin out there to save money because you could be right underneath the dance floor or a concert hall and hear nothing all night but people dancing and stomping on the ceiling. Remember, it's a ship. It's not made of cement. So there's, you know, they do their best with the noise buffering, but trust me, you don't want to be near elevators in the morning. You don't want to be near underneath the swimming pool. You don't want the gym, things like that. You want to station yourself where you're comfortable and probably get a better night's sleep. So look at the floor plans of the ship and the deck plans. Choose roughly where you want to go. When you're buying a cruise, you can choose which cabin you want to book. So there might be a $5 difference in the cabin that's the cheapest and the cabin that's further away from elevators on a lower deck or on a higher deck away from all the activity. So choose your cabin wisely, not just for the size of the cabin, whether it's going to be balcony, inside, suite, or anything like that, but make sure you're choosing the cabin for where you're going to be most enjoyable and away from the noise. Because even in your cabin beside you, the walls are paper thin. They're like Bristol board kind of thing, you know, a chalkboard between walls. Because uh, they have to be light. You, you know, we, we want to float on the ocean, we don't want to sink. So we're not making cement walls. So you're going to hear your neighbors if they're loud as well. So you don't want to compound that with loud neighbors, loud people in the hallway, people waiting for the elevator, the, the elevator's dinging all the time, the dance floor up above just pounding till one in the morning, two in the morning. Choose your cabin. Don't let the cruise line choose it for you. You choose it, do some investigation, talk to a travel agent, much more enjoyable vacation. Trust me. Number 12, wear the right footwear. I don't know how many times I've been out to an excursion in Jamaica and we're going to Dun Falls where there's a lot of walking and stuff like that and people are leaving the, cat, the cruise ship in flip-flops thinking, oh, I'm going in the water in Dun Falls. Yes, you are. But you got to do a lot of walking to get there to begin with. So walking in flip-flops through forest and woods and cement and rocks is not the most conducive to a good time. So make sure you're wearing the proper footwear where you're going. It's a lot easier to put wear a small little trap backpack with yourself, put some flip-flops in there, wear your running shoes till you get there, and then switch them out. So wear the proper footwear, especially if you're going on tours that are going to be with lots of walking. Make sure you got comfortable shoes, not high heels, not dress shoes, not flip-flops. Comfortable walking shoes. Number 13 is kind of a one for me that a lot of people sometimes disagree with, but 
I never go anywhere without my passport being on me. I will carry that everywhere I go because especially on cruises and things like that or in foreign countries, if I'm stopped by the police, I have my passport. Not a photocopy of my passport, I have my actual passport, things go a lot smoother. If I am uh, miss the ship, now I'm in a foreign country with no passport, what do I do? Well, I have my passport on me because I never leave home without it uh, when I'm on vacation. <clears throat> it can save a lot of time and a lot of frustration if something happens on your trip. Number 14, do some research. Go on YouTube, type in the port you're visiting and just look at people's vlogs and uh, descriptions of areas you're going to. Some people, you know, you could find out, oh, you know what, we had a bad experience in this area. It was, you know, dingier and more, uh, we were really nervous for our safety in there where when we went here, we felt really comfortable and everything like that. Or, hey, did you know they have these great cave kayaking tours at this location and it's only 10 minutes outside of town and it only costs this much. So you can find out a lot of information on the ports other than just typing in the port name in Google and seeing what the travel destination is for the tourism. Go on YouTube and Facebook and search those areas and actually find out what some fun things are to do and what some musty things to do are in that port location. Don't just think that the people on the cruise ship know everything. There's so much more in some cities to do. Take a look. Number 15, yeah, how do I sum this up? Don't be a jackass. Be polite, be a nice person. When you're interacting with your staff, the crew, other passengers, uh, boat attendants when you're going to shore, just be polite to people. If things, if you're running 10 minutes late, it's 10 minutes. Don't get upset. Don't be, oh, what are you doing being 10 minutes late with the boat? I don't want to be on shore 10 minutes ago. Just let it go. Be polite. Say hello. And you know what? When you're polite to people, when you're on your trip, they're polite back to you. And how much more enjoyable is life when everyone around you is smiling and nice as opposed to you being grumpy and then turning them grumpy towards you. And yes, they're going to service you, they're going to do what you want, but they're not going to be great, happy about it. You know what I mean? Where if a person likes you, they're going to go above and beyond and they're going to say things and give you better tips and better services and that. So just be polite, be a nice person, not only on vacation, what the heck, try doing that in life as well. Number 16, don't be late. For anything. Don't be late for your shore excursion where you're holding up people on the shore excursion from getting back to the cruise. Don't be late for the safety drill when you're in front of the lifeboats and they're teaching you about safety because other people are there waiting well before you and if you're late you're holding up everybody in your group because you couldn't be bothered to be there on time. And especially don't be late for your cruise ship because they don't care, they will leave without you because there's 5,000 other passengers who got there on time. So yeah, if you're supposed to be somewhere at five o'clock, I know you're on a relaxing vacation, but um, yeah, just show up on time because your tardiness doesn't just affect you, it affects all those around you. Number 17, don't just assume all things are the same. So read the fine print. A lot of people will take a shore excursion that's uh, an eight hour long shore excursion that they're gone and they think for instance they're going to be fed. They're going to be brought to a restaurant and fed because you know I paid $150 for this shore excursion. Surely food's included. Uh, not necessarily. Some crew, you know, some ports they do have dining and things like that included especially in like wine tasting tours that you're on. But make sure you know what you're signing up for. If you sign up for, uh, they have this new thing where the cruise line will choose a category for you and maybe give you an upgrade and maybe not, but they're gonna give you a good price on it, but they choose the room. Well, now, okay, they're choosing the room, so are you gonna be a good suite but by the elevator? Are you gonna be a good suite but underneath the gym? You see what I'm saying? Read the fine print, know what's going on, and just make sure that whatever you're signing, you know what you're signing. Number 18, pick the right 
cruise line. Just like people, cruise lines have different personalities. Disney, all about families and uh, family events and fun movies and cartoons. Uh, Carnival, all about the college party ship, uh, lots of things to do. Norwegian, kind of in between where they have lots of things to do but they're a little bit more sophisticated than Carnival when it comes to you know, the families and the older couples. Princess, first class cruise line, meant for older travelers, less children, more um, interactive things for adults to do on board, at like, uh, like lectures and things like that, as opposed to uh, you know, family events. Uh, Cunard, British, old world touring, like you would see on the Titanic and ships like that in the olden days. So every cruise line has their own personality. Look into them. You'll see tons of videos on YouTube. You can check my channel if you want. There's tons of videos on all the different cruise lines, including a video, hey, what the heck, I'll put it up here, how to choose the right cruise line. So there you go. Make sure you're checking, checking the cruise line that's best suited for your vacation. Number 19, what the heck, if you're going to pick the right cruise line, let's pick the right ship. Um, are you a quiet person? Do you like less crowds? Then you might want to be on a smaller ship. Are you a person who wants to make sure there's lots to do on a ship? Well, you want to be on maybe the Oasis of the Seas, the largest cruise ship in the world with flow riders and outdoor sports activities and ice skating rinks and all this kind of thing built into the cruise ship, which is absolutely amazing when you think about it. So yeah, don't only pick the right cruise line, go ahead and pick the right ship because that can be just as important, just like you would pick the right hotel for you when you're traveling, you want to pick the right hotel at, in the ocean the same way. Number 20, anything that's vital, your passport, your cruise documentations to get on the ship, your medication that you need to take every day, never, ever, ever put these things in a suitcase that you're not going to be carrying with you. Always have it on a carry-on, if uh, they lose your suitcases, you've lost your passport, you've lost your medication, you've lost all this other stuff. If you, you know, have it on you at all times, you're a lot less likely to lose what's valuable to you, including money. Never pack money in a suitcase. I, I don't understand when I see people packing $2,000 cash in their little envelope in their suitcase. And they, uh, you know, when people go through your suitcases looking for things and they come across $2,000, I don't care how honest some people are, things can happen because not everybody in the world is honest. So if it's vital, make sure it's on carry-on, not packed in a suitcase. Number 20, don't spend your entire cruise online. Don't be worried about Facebooking your experience and filming your experiences and periscoping your experiences and you know, Snapchats and all this other Twitter. You're spending more time telling people about your great vacation than having a great vacation. You can do all that stuff afterwards. Or you know what? At the end of the day, go ahead and update people when you're getting ready to go to bed. As opposed to every time you're at, oh, Snapchat this, hashtag this, just enjoy your vacation. Uh, unless you're making a living doing it, it's not conducive to a fun vacation. And you'll end up at the end saying, oh, look at this, I got some great Snapchats and I got some great pictures for Facebook, but yeah, I spent a lot of time doing that on my vacation and I didn't really have enough time to do some other things that I wanted to do. So don't spend your entire vacation online. It's okay to update things, but take time to enjoy the cruise yourself. 22. Don't hog the damn deck chairs. Don't get up at 4.30 in the morning, put your stuff on a deck chair, and then show up at 3 in the afternoon to sit by the pool and expect your stuff to still be on that deck chair. First of all, they're monitoring deck chairs nowadays, and if they see stuff that doesn't seem to have anyone around it, they'll go put a little sticker on it with the time, and then 45 minutes later, roughly, if no one's ever come back to that deck chair, they're gathering up those belongings and they're storing it until somebody comes to claim it. So your personal belongings will disappear. And if 20 people are doing that, now they have to figure out all the belongings to those 20 people. So yeah, don't hog deck chairs. If you're not going to be there, 
don't try and save it all day. Don't get up first thing in the morning. It's absolutely ridiculous. There are places you can sit on the ship perfectly fine to get views and things like that. You don't have to be 10 inches away from the pool to have a good time. Number 23, remember the cabin walls are not house walls. They're not, you know, you don't have 10 feet between you and your neighbor. You don't have uh, fire protection. You don't have uh, chip rock and all this other stuff. You have basically almost cardboard between walls in a cruise ship. Uh, so if you're loud and boisterous, your kids are running around like crazy and you think, oh, I'm just in my room, it's okay. Not necessarily. You could be disturbing the neighbors on either side of you and even beside them. Um, I've had people so loud in a cruise ship beside me that they were actually three rooms away and I could hear them in my room and I had people banging on my door thinking I was the one making all the noise and then they saw that I, yeah, there's no kids in my cabin, it wasn't me. So. Remember to respect the people. You can't control kids from having fun. That's not what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is if you're getting drunk or you are get seven people in your cabin talking, just remember that there some, might be somebody beside you just trying to rest a little bit. Number 24, don't just sit there waiting for the elevators. If you're on the 15th floor and you're going down to the 13th floor for dinner, don't sit there 10 minutes waiting for the elevator. It's a short walk down two flights of stairs. Just take the stairs, get a little bit of exercise. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about someone who's in a scooter or a wheelchair who has trouble walking and stuff like that. I'm talking for the most of us who are very capable of walking a couple flights of stairs. But instead, we'll sit there during the busiest times of the ship for dinner and people leaving for shore excursions and we'll wait. 10, 15, 20 minutes trying to squeeze into an elevator. Meanwhile, you could have just walked down a couple of flights of stairs or, and you know, it also frees up the elevator for those who actually need the elevator to get up and down the stairs. So yeah, remember it's a cruise, you're relaxing, but the stairs are an alternative and it's much faster than waiting for the elevators 90% of the time. And lastly, 25, have fun. Remember, it's a vacation. No matter what happens, you miss a port. Uh, oh, they didn't have a steak that night. They didn't have lobster that night at the restaurant. Or I had one so-so meal. Let it slip off your shoulders. Just let it go. Remember, you're on a vacation. You're out in the water. You're having a good time. The ships are great. And, you know, just relax. I see so many people stressed out on vacation, like Disney World vacations and cruise vacations, because they want to do so much and get so much done. Relax. Remember you're on vacation. It's supposed to be fun and relaxing, not stressful. I can't stress this enough to you to not be stressful. Does that make sense? It does in my mind. And after all, I'm doing the video, so that's what counts. So there you go, 25 things not to do on a cruise or really any vacation some, for some of these tips. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and if you like more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm getting a lot of people subscribing lately and it's great because we get to interact with each other and people are sending me messages about questions that I know that if they looked it up themselves, they might not just find. Uh, but I'm able to find it being a travel agent and things like that. So I'm glad to help people out. I hope people like the videos. And if you don't, let me know what you didn't like about the video. And uh, just, you know, remember I'm a person. Be nice. Uh, I, take, I take criticism well, but I don't take rudeness too well, uh, like everybody else. So until next time, uh, please subscribe, please thumbs up, and have yourself a great vacation.